Hey fam and welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. Today we're going to talk about 20 ways to see if you are actually secretly sabotaging your relationship right after this. All right, fam, thanks so much for coming back. So are you secretly sabotaging your relationship? This happens on a subconscious level. You don't even necessarily know that you're doing this. So we're going to go ahead and jump right on in. The very first thing that you could be doing is you're always the person who focuses on the negative or the bad in the relationship. You hardly ever see the positive or what's going right in your relationship. And so always focusing on what's bad about your partner or what's bad about the relationship can be a way that you are secretly sabotaging your relationship. The second way to see if you are secretly sabotaging your relationship is that you make everything about yourself. Every conversation about yourself. You never take it into consideration what your partner is actually saying. So instead of you actually listening to what your partner is saying, actively listening to what your partner is saying, somehow, some way, you turn the conversation around and make it all about you and about your feelings and why things are not going the way that you think that they should go. Or you maybe even secretly start to blame your spouse or partner for doing X, Y, and Z. So you always make the conversation about you. Woe was me. You try to make your, your you try to make your partner feel guilty about something. You turn the conversation always about yourself. You always make it about you. The third way that you may be subconsciously sabotaging your relationship is that you know anytime you guys are apart from each other and then when you come back together, you are stopping the kissing or the greeting of each other. So. You have left that fall by the wayside for whatever reason. I get it when you are ticked off with each other, but on a normal day, on a day where you are just feeling happy-go-lucky, you should not just walk in and pass your partner by, pass your spouse by. You should give them a greeting, specifically a kiss, but it could be a hug. Whatever way that you guys usually greet each other, you definitely should keep that up. But specifically for this one, you definitely should be kissing your partner especially after you guys have parted away from each other and now you're coming back together. The fourth way that you may be sabotaging your relationship, this one I can't even say is really a secret because I talk about it all the time. It's spending quality time with your partner. Just because you two are in the same household, the same apartment, the same space, but you're doing your own thing, maybe somebody's on the computer, maybe somebody's watching TV, you hardly ever come together and do things together while you guys are in the household that doesn't mean that you're spending quality time together. Spending quality time together seriously means doing something together with your spouse. Again, whether it's you guys are having a conversation about something, you guys are eating dinner together and chatting about whatever, or you guys are actually watching a movie, whatever it is that you guys usually do to spend quality time together. I mean, I know some couples like to pay, like to play video games together. That's a way to also spend quality time together. But you have to spend quality time with your partner. That's a way for you guys to feel connected, for the intimacy to increase, and for you guys to actually feel happier when you are in the household with your spouse, with your partner. Spend some quality time with them, not just being in the same apartment or the same household with them, and you guys aren't talking or not doing anything together. Again, this is not going to happen every single day, but it needs to happen a lot more often than not. <laughs> The fifth way that you could be secretly sabotaging your relationship is that mainly this one is for you ladies out there. You are still being shy in the bedroom. Um, maybe your partner or spouse, your guy has asked you to do X, Y, and Z. And for whatever reason, you don't want to try this thing out. So you're still being shy in the bedroom. You're not um, relaxing and letting your hair down. And as the guys say, being the freak in the streets, you are being miss shy in the bedroom as well <laughs> as outside of the bedroom. So just loosen up, try some different things, have some fun. We're going to leave it like that, okay? We're going to move on. The sixth way that you might be secretly sabotaging your relationship is when you have these silent screams in your unconscious mind and um, when your partner shows up and they're ready to show you love and everything. So your mind actually starts to cringe about this and there's actually a portion in your mind where it starts to show you the fear that you have with them showing this love to you. It's actually showing you a disbelief about the person and who they are and what their real intentions are 
when they're trying to show you this actual love that's genuine to your partner, but for you, the receiver of it, you're like, mm, some ain't right, some ain't right. They don't really mean it, you know? And so there's this disbelief and fear of it actually happening for you and to you. The seventh way that you could be secretly sabotaging your relationship is when you are not 100% committed for the long haul of that relationship. It's something that is holding you back, subconscious or not. You're not moving the relationship forward. And because you're not moving the relationship forward and you're not necessarily 100% um, committed to uh, the long haul of the relationship, there's something that's holding you back. Like you're not giving your all to the relationship for whatever reason. And that is definitely a way to secretly sabotage that relationship because it could be a really good relationship for you, but because you're not all in, you're not gun ho for the relationship, you're holding things back. Um, trust me, your partner can actually feel that there is just something not right. You're not all the way in, but they can't really put their finger on what's actually happening because you are the only person that has the answer to that so you're not 100 percent committed the eighth way that you could secretly be sabotaging your relationship is when you're actually lying to yourself about how happy you are or you're actually feeling like you need to showcase your happiness to everybody around you you have to put everything that you guys do on social media you have to send it to all of your friends you got to call everybody and let them know how happy you are and what your act what your spouse did for you today not knowing that behind the scenes these things come few far and in between and you're actually again lying to yourself about how happy you are in this relationship with your spouse with your partner with your mate the ninth way that you could be Secretly sabotaging your relationship is when you take everything personally. Your partner cannot say anything to you without you feeling like it's an actual personal attack on you and on your character. They could be saying, hey, your shoes are dirty. Very Something very simple. What you mean my shoes dirty? They ugly? What you trying to say? I mean, you're just going off on a frenzy about minutia. Things that don't even make sense for you to be going off about, you going off about them. For no reason at all, really. And it's because you're taking everything personally. And that's absolutely going to be a way to sabotage your relationship because if your partner can't come to you and express some things about you, I mean, you know, whatever it is. Again, let's go back to the, the to the shoes. If they can't tell you, hey, you know what, baby, you probably should change those shoes. <laughs> They're looking a little raggedy. You got some better looking shoes in there. Who knows? Those might be your comfortable shoes that you decided to wear because you wear them with everything. And because you wear them with everything, they looking all beat up from the floor up. <laughs> so you could just change your shoes. But if your partner feel like they can't come to you and say this very um, tiny thing, then definitely they will not feel comfortable coming to you when it's something that they feel is something large that they need to get off of their chest with you. They're going to feel some type of fear of saying it to you. And they might even start being very sarcastic and kind of throwing things out there for you to catch the hints. The 10th way that you could be secretly sabotaging your relationship is that you always play the victim. It doesn't matter if you were wrong. You are never going to own up to your wrongness. There is going to be something, some way that, again, you're going to turn the conversation around and you are going to play the victim. The woe was me. I did this because you did that. Instead of taking responsibility for your own actions, you are now just, you playing a victim about everything. Every single solitary thing that your spouse that your spouse brings to you to try to um, quote unquote correct you on or to try to get you to see that this is not the way to do X, Y and Z. You play the victim on everything. The 11th way that you could be secretly sabotaging your relationship is that you get everybody your best. You he he and ha ha with everybody. And then when it comes time to your partner, you only give them the leftovers of your day, of your laughter, of your energy. They get only the leftovers and everybody outside of your relationship, outside of the household gets all of your best. You can laugh and joke about anything when you're out of the household. You don't take things personally when you're out of the household. But for some reason, when you get back to the household, you take everything personally. There's no laughter. There's no joking. And everybody's getting your best. You're showing up and showing out with everybody except when you come home to your partner. And actually, it needs to be flipped in a lot of relationships because your partner and your family should absolutely be getting your best and everybody else kind of get whatever. Or you could just say, 
everybody can get my best because you never know who you're going to meet out there, who you're going to run into. And all of us need some help with something. You just never know who you're going to run into. But if you're being arrogant and a jerk to not only your spouse, not only your family, but also to the people outside as well, there's going to be some day that you need some help and somebody's not going to be there for you because you're always being the jerk. <laughs> and God got a way of showing you you got a way of showing you that, hey, you do, need, you do need people. You need people. You can't do this thing on your own because we were not meant to be alone. And I know that's a for your spouse and everything, but I'm just saying, people in general, we're not meant to be alone, period. None of us would actually survive being alone by ourselves. That's actually just a side note why the prison systems have actually stopped um, putting people in the what they call the hole because a lot of the inmates were actually um, having psychological per, um, problems after they had been in the hole and basically away from human contact for a um, number of days. And I can't remember the number of days. If I remember, I will absolutely put it up here uh, um, in the video. But they do not allow the prison system to keep inmates away from base oh solitary confinement is the word I'm looking for they don't allow them to keep them in solitary confinement um, over a certain amount of days now because when they were keeping them in there for long periods of time they found that the the inmates were coming back crazy because we can't take it being by ourselves we have to have human contact Twelfth way that you could be secretly sabotaging your relationship is that you give your partner this silent treatment frequently and then also for long periods of time. Because you think that that's the best way, that that's going to be the best way to get across your point. You're secretly punishing them by not talking to them about whatever the issue is. Instead of actually correcting and let's talk about what the issue is, you just decide to give them silent treatment. Frequent and for long periods at a time. And eventually what that is doing is actually creating the distance between you guys. And eventually that's going to get old to the, to the person on the receiving end. And that's also going to be a way to open up the door for cheating to actually occur. Because we all want to feel connected especially with our spouse, especially with our mate. So you want to feel connected. And if you're always giving your partner the silent treatment and for long extended periods of time, at some point, they're going to find somebody who is not giving them the silent treatment. And usually the cheating does not start. It, it basically starts very innocent. It starts very innocent. You're just having a conversation with somebody. And eventually, because your needs and you're feeling lonely at the household, those needs are not being met. Eventually, you start to go and seek that out from that person that is basically paying you some attention. So the cheating, most of the time, starts very innocently. But then it leads into you feeling like that person that's actually not ignoring you is understands you more. They understand you better. You guys can communicate better, et cetera, et cetera. And before you know it, at some point, it might not happen in the first week, might not happen in the first few months, but at some point, this is when the sexual contact, uh, contact comes into place. So that is that absolutely is a very toxic thing to do. The silent treatment, especially for long periods of time, it's definitely going to ruin your relationship in the long run. The 13th way that you could be secretly sabotaging your relationship is that you just decide to pick fights for no reason at all. Like, I've heard that some people just don't want to be bothered or maybe they want to um, go out that night, but they know that they person, they know, um, excuse me, they know that they partner or spouse don't like them to go out to the specific club or hang out with these specific people. So they'll find any way to get out of the house. And so a way for them to get out of the house is to pick a fight. Because if we're fighting, I don't have to come home, right? That's, that's the mindset. I don't have to come home if we're fighting. I don't have to check in if we're fighting. I could do what we want if I could do what I want to do if we're fighting. And that's definitely a way to secretly sabotage your relationship because over a period of time, it's like, where are you going? Who are you with? And then it's still all of those questions are still there. All of those questions are still there. And it's just a leading down a slippery slope. The 14th way that you could be secretly sabotaging your relationship. And honestly, I don't know how you can't know this one. 
I don't know how you cannot know that you are sabotaging, not even secretly, that you are sabotaging your relationship uh, when you are still on the dating sites, when you are in a relationship, and especially in a marriage. But if you are in a relationship, but you are still on the dating sites, you're still putting yourself out there, you're still searching, then again, you are not 100% committed to this relationship. And definitely, it's not a secret that when your partner finds out that you're on these dating sites, that the relationship could potentially break up. That shouldn't be a secret to you. But some people, some people might not know this, which is why I inserted this one in here. But to me, being very logical, <laughs> if we're in a relationship, if we're in a marriage, uh, no, 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 you shouldn't be on the dating sites. So I'm not saying secret on this one, but you definitely will be sabotaging your relationship. And you have to take responsibility for what you have done when it does blow up all in your face. Because if you're not in the relationship that you're in wholeheartedly, then just move on. Really. I know it's easier said than done, but why go through all the arguing when you just want to do what you want to do? So just do it. The 15th way that you may be secretly sabotaging your relationship is when you feel that things are too good to be true. And so because you think that they are too good, things are too good to be true, now you start looking for the bad and what's actually going to go wrong and you're just waiting for something to go wrong with this person in this relationship because you ain't never met nobody like this person and things are just going really well you guys don't argue or hardly ever argue and when you do argue they're not yelling and cussing and screaming and calling you out of your name and it's just like wait a minute who is this person or when you guys hang out you're always laughing and joking it just seems very easy but in the back of your mind you are still waiting for something to occur because this person is too good to be true and something they hiding something they have to be hiding something so you're not necessarily believing the person that's actually right in front of you and everybody's not out to get you <laughs> everybody ain't no crook right there are some great people out there. There are some good people out there that want to be in healthy relationships and not all of these toxic relationships. But because you have not dealt with your baggage, that's why you're thinking that this person is too good to be true. The 16th way that you may be secretly sabotaging your relationship is that when you are home and the family is there, including your spouse, mate, you're never really there with them. You're never really present with them. There's always something that takes precedence over you hanging out with your family, over you really just like checking in with your family and seeing how they're really doing, playing with the kids, doing the homework with the kids, you know, maybe even cooking with the wife, just basically, again, spending that quality time together. But you're physically there in the home. Like maybe because you actually like being in the household, you're not a club person or a person that even has a lot of friends because you like your circle small. But even when you're home with your family, with your spouse, you're not present. You might be in the world of technology or you might be a gamer or you might just have a lot of stuff on your mind and you cannot turn it off for whatever reason. Maybe there's just a whole bunch of issues that you need to deal with and for whatever reason, Everything has taken over and again, you cannot turn it off and you're basically leaving your spouse and leaving your family out. You're hanging them out the dry, really. <laughs> so yes, you're physically there in the household, but you're not present. Also, let me just say for you dads out there, this is just a side note, but since I brought up family, uh, for you dads out there who are there in the household, especially with the children, right? Because I mentioned dads. Definitely make it a point to spend time with your children. Make it a point to spend time with your children. And the reason why is because you should want to spend time with your children, number one. But also studies have actually shown that the men, the dads that actually spend time with their kids, um, they're happier, the kids. The kids are happier. Of course, the dad is happier, too. But specifically, I'm talking about the children when I give you these statistics. Uh, the research and the studies have shown that the kids are happier. They're actually more confident. They do better with their studies. And they hold off from having sex at such an early age because 
what they're doing is they're getting their information out there from other children, number one. And then also, number two, they're learning how to, how not how to, they're learning to get the love that they're secretly trying to get from their dad. They're out there searching for other men. And this is why a lot of teenagers and um, a lot of teenagers end up having sex so early on. A lot of it is because they're not talking to their parents, period, right? They're getting the wrong information from their peers, but specifically for the dads. The dads are not in their lives to show them what a man is actually supposed to be doing and how he's supposed to actually act and treat the woman, meaning their mom, and even treat the daughter, right? So she's basically out there searching for the love that she was not receiving from her dad. Even though he was physically in the household, he was not present with her. So that's just a side note, throwing it out there since I brought up family, okay? The 17th way that you could be secretly sabotaging your relationship is that you just avoid going home. <laughs> I'm laughing because I always think of the Chris Rock movie, I Love My Wife. Or excuse me, the title is actually I Think I Love My Wife. And where he's sitting in the car and he's like, okay, I'm, I'm going in there. I'm going in there. And the wife is kind of looking outside and she's like, I see him out there. What is he out there doing? But he's like, oh my God, I got to go in here. I know she's going to give me the third degree. Then I got to deal with these crazy kids. And, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling all sexy like I am with the lady that's trying to hit me up outside uh, of the family. And so he's like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So... He was, he was finding any way to avoid going home because he was having more fun. He was feeling more respected and sexier and wanted outside of the household. And so um, <laughs> he was avoiding going home. Now, some of that could be because of uh, constant arguments or, you know, um, just a, just a plethora of things where, why you could be avoiding going home, but not because you're working or doing a project where you can't go home. No, you're avoiding going home. You have the time to go, but you don't go. Definitely sabotaging your relationship. <laughs> Number 18, you vent all the time about your spouse to coworkers, to friends, to family, basically to anybody that will listen. You always talk a talking bad or saying something negative about your spouse, about your mate, to any and everybody. And the only person that can actually help solve your issue is your spouse, is your mate. So it doesn't really matter with your family or friends or coworkers. None of the advice or the shade or whatever it is that they're trying to give to you, that none of that really matters. The only person that can help you out, the only person that can actually answer your questions is your spouse. So you have to talk it out with your spouse. That's the only way you're going to resolve these things anyway. Talk to the person that can actually help you out. Talk to the person where all of this stuff matters. Number 19 actually goes into sort of the silent treatment, but basically you're staying mad for days and weeks at your spouse, at your mate, at your partner. Uh, I mean, like, doesn't matter what the issue is. Basically, by the time you guys even talk again, both of you have actually forgotten why you were mad. And you're just holding on to the anger for no reason. Really, you really ain't holding on to it for no reason. And more than likely, after a couple of days, most people are done being mad anyway. Now, whether they talk about the issue or not, that's something different. But if you being mad and staying mad for days and weeks at a time, you're definitely sabotaging the relationship because, again, there's that distance. And we all want to feel connected. We all want to feel together, and especially with your spouse, especially with your mate, especially with your partner, because that's supposed to be like your home right? That's supposed to be your castle. That's supposed to be the place where you feel loved and wanted. And so if you're always coming home to a person that's mad at you all the time, all the time mad, or all the time giving you, you know, the silent treatment and just basically being distant where you have to have conversations with other people to get that connectedness or to feel heard after a period of time, that's going to get old. And again, somebody going to creep in under you and then you're gonna be wondering what happened instead of just actually putting on your big girl panties putting on your big boy draws and having a conversation you rather stay mad because you want to prove a point but really you're not proving a point you're actually hurting yourself you're also hurting the relationship and definitely you're hurting your, hurting your spouse as well because whether they're trying to figure out what's actually happening or not at some point it's just like 
oh, they mad again. Oh, boy, they mad again. And after a while, it's like you kind of being the boy who, who um, cried wolf all the time. Because, again, you're turning everything around on you. And it's woe is me. Everything is woe is me. Cool it. The 20th way that you could be secretly sabotaging your relationship is that you are not completely open to receiving the love that your spouse, mate, or partner is trying to give to you. At some point, you find a reason to block that love. <laughs> Whether it's the hugs, the kisses, the having sex, the conversation, the just laughing jokes, doesn't matter. After a while, it basically becomes like a business transaction between the two people that are there. And it's because you're trying to hold them at a distance because for some reason you are scared to completely open up and completely let that person into your life because most of the time, what has happened? You have gotten hurt before and you do not want to get hurt again. And so you are basically keeping this person at a arm's length because you don't want to get hurt again. You want to open up, you really want to let them in, but if for some reason you are holding back and you just will not let down your guard. You will not be vulnerable. And so that's definitely sabotaging your relationship secretly. And all of these things, with the exception of one or two, are on a subconscious level. So if you find yourself doing these things, definitely find a way to switch things around. And I know I mentioned this book before, which is Mel Robbins, The Five Second Rule. This definitely can apply here. Anytime you don't want to speak to your partner, anytime you don't want to address that issue, anytime you don't want to have that tough conversation, you are secretly sabotaging your relationship. Instead of being mad for days and weeks at a time, go talk to your partner. Five seconds. Whenever you start to think about the thing that you don't want to do, it's going to be hard for you to do, you're scared to do it, blah, blah, blah. Give yourself no more than five seconds. Do five, four, three, two, one, and then go and do it. Five, four, three, two, one, go and do it. You'll see that you're actually helping your relationship, and you guys are definitely a happier couple. You guys are having more intimate conversations. The intimacy is definitely there. The connection is definitely there, and you guys are just happier together. And you can have that relationship where other people are envious, but it definitely takes the work for you to do that. The relationships that we think about are cultivated and they do not happen overnight. But all of these toxic things that I just talked about, these 20 uh, ways that you could be secretly sabotaging your relationship, don't help the situation at all. All right, fam, let me know down in the comment section below what you actually thought about this video. Did you see yourself in any of these things? Is it something that you need to stop? Definitely let me know because you guys know that this is a dialogue and it is not a monologue. <laughs> Excuse me. Because here at I Love Me, 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 you guys know that I'm supplying all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships, not toxic ones. All right, I will see you guys in a future video. Deuces.